freedom has a special meaning to me. It comes at a very high cost. What is freedom to you? What is your source of freedom? For me, freedom is precious. Freedom is a gift from God. And more, freedom is an incredible treasure. General George Marshall frequently emphasized this. Military power wins battles, but spiritual power wins wars. Those two powers are indeed Christ and the American Armed Forces. Christ died on the, for, on the cross for our freedom. The American forces, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines died, and they stand ready, many of them today, to die to keep us and America free. Many Americans value freedom with deep gratitude, but many take it for granted. It's easy to take freedom for granted when you have never had it taken from you. I strongly believe that I was born with a hunger for truth and freedom. Why? Because I was born in communist Romania during the totalitarian regime of dictator Nicolae Ceausescu. Then, Romania was a land of lies and a prison land. No, not one with real stone walls, steel bars, and watchtowers, but a prison land nevertheless. The stone walls were the cruel, harsh life and treatment from the government. The bars were the lies, and the watchtowers were the suspicions, anxieties, secrets, and fears. To silence us, the communist government and dictator Ceausescu lab label any of our questions or skepticism as an anti-government statement punishable from, by everything, from loss of employment to death. We live in a constant state of anxiety when one could be denounced for anti-government statement by anyone, a friend, a neighbor, a classmate, even a family member. To avoid the dictator's punishment, many people remain silent. I watch my parents and relatives many times acting as good citizens outside of home, but whispering their real feelings about the communists inside the home. The more fear battered those around me into silence, the more obsessed I became to discover the truth and freedom. I refused to grow, to the, to grow with fear and lies, but I was surrendered by fearful people with a defeated, defeatist mentality. Nevertheless, one night, I heard my parents whispering this story. The Romanian communist government, the new Romanian communist government, together with the Russian communist troops, conquered Romania city by city. Their desire was to fundamentally transform Romania and to subdue everyone. They even recruited ordinary citizens as their spies to report those hostile to communists. So one evening, my parents' neighbor, who still owned a small store in the part of the town not yet transformed by the communists and the Russian government, received a tip from his family that those communist military troops were on their way to his store. He knew immediately 
that it was time to hurry and close the store to avoid any confrontation and even death by them. With sadness and tears in his eyes, he locked the store and walked a few steps away. Then he stopped and with fear running down on his face, he looked back to his store one more time. Placing the keys he stores into his pocket, he found something in, inside, a pen. Immediately, he walked back to the store, gently touched the sign on the window. Saying, American wine. And with a stroke on his pen, he added two letters. I hope it works. OK. I think so. Now the sign will say, Americans are coming. He could hear his heart. His hands was shaken. He looked deeply into the darkness, knowing that if caught, he will be killed immediately. He inspected the darkness for any coming spies, and quickly he walked to the other window of his store and did the same thing. And the sign, instead of American wine, now it says, Americans are coming. His courageous message, American are coming, resist, brought hope into the darkness. His courage inspired me. That night, I found my inspiration. I decided to grow up and be like him. I never met him. But for years, his courage sustained me in my own journey and fight for freedom. But as a kid, I don't think it's working right. OK. <clears throat> but as a kid, I still had one more question. How do I speak the language of freedom? In my search to find an answer, I noticed that at our annual family reunions, that many of our relatives look towards certain relatives, attorneys. So it looked to me that they had the answer to our problems. So I decided to become an attorney to speak up for the truth and for freedom. And I went to law school. Unfortunately, I did not know at that time that the communist government selected lawyer leaders via the law school admission process. As the graduate of law school in Romania, became the attorney general, ministers of justice, ambassadors, attorneys, or judges, they were expected to advance and support the communist agenda and to fight against those called dissidents. As a young attorney under communist regime of dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, I spent many years searching for the truth. But I was surrendered by lies, injustice, fear, uncertainty, and defeat. I fought frequently against hopelessness, weariness, and even discouragement. Until the day I finally encountered a different client in my law office.
<coughs> a client who, in the midst of our daily misery, radiated joy and peace, had a smile on his face, and he never seemed discouraged. Frankly, it troubled me. So one day, I asked him, I wish I had what you have in your life. Surprised, he looked at me and asked, do you go to church? Yes, I said, at Christmas, why? <laughs> Would you like to go to church, he said to me, this Sunday? I stared at him thinking, I am so sorry I asked. <laughs> what does church have to do with anything? But I wanted to have his peace and joy. His optimistic look in life his sense of confidence. So the next Sunday, I visited his church. And there the pastor opened the Bible and read, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that day, I found the truth and freedom. And I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And also that day, I accepted the divine call to defend people, jail or put in psychiatric hospitals for speaking out against the dictator and his regime. And I also accepted the call to defend Christians persecuted by the communist government. Because once I found the truth, silence was not longer an option. From that moment on, my life was dedicated to defending the truth and freedom, no matter the cost. My conversion to Christianity as a young attorney marked indeed the end of my search for truth and freedom, but it surely turned my world upside down in many ways. Freedom in Christ was indeed a wonderful new reality. As I was infused with a strength and boldness, I had never known before, but it was not without danger. Under Ceausescu's government, we were not free to confront the lies of dictator or his government. He ruled Romania with an iron fist. Romanians were arrested, beaten, in prison for carrying or sharing a Bible for going to church. Ceausescu's goal was to demolish as many church possible and make a room for his palace. So church buildings were bulldozed and their land confiscated. Dictator Ceausescu declared himself a god and expected every Romanian to worship him alone. Those who refused were punished and often jail or murder. His government control, strictly controlled our lives, methodically silenced us, and starved many to death. Nevertheless, dictator told us an even decree that he brought us the golden era and every citizen was required to agree with him. If you did not, you would face the full wrath of his secret police, Securitate, the most ferocious and brutal secret police in the world. Dictator Ceausescu worked tirelessly to deceive America and the world. Surely he succeeded for a while. In an attempt to secure the most favored national status from America, Ceausescu promised to respect human and religious rights, to welcome Western missionaries, and to allow Bibles to enter into Romania. In reality, he ruled Romania with an iron fist. Dissidents were jailed, tortured, and killed. He strictly prohibited attorneys to use any laws protecting human and religious rights. He confiscated Bible demolished churches, and persecuted Christians. 
many Christians were fired from their workplace for their belief. One, others were jailed. Many of them simply disappeared. Families were destroyed. Pastors were replaced by others loyal to government. Churches were infiltrated and subdued. But I refused to live in lies and fear of, of what a dictator or his government could do to me. As a young Christian attorney, I defended people facing death or jail for criticizing the dictator and his government. Christians facing jail or death for transporting Bible across town, for watching the Jesus movie, worshiping or worshiping Christ with the, their own family in their own home. Against the dictator's strict orders, I used those Romanian laws to protect human or religious rights and took the government to court. I often feared for myself and for my family. Ceausescu's government was ruthless in imposing his, its will. Human life meant nothing. Obedience was all that mattered. The harder I fought, the more I became a target. My legal work was labeled as an act of treason. I was declared an enemy of the state, kidnapped, prison, arrested, beaten, tortured, placed under house arrest, and I came within seconds of being executed under the order of Ceausescu himself. But God's power in me was always greater for the mission ahead of me. So many of my cases became the subject of broadcast on Radio Free Europe and Voice of America. United States diplomats, Secretary of State, and Congressman Christopher Smith and Frank Wolf frequently came to Romania to talk about my cases. Several of my cases became part of the United States Department of State's reports and also part of the United Nations reports on human and religious rights violation in Ceausescu's communist Romania. And with that, finally, Ceausescu and his government were exposed to America and to the entire world. But for that very reason, dictator Ceausescu wanted me dead. So he sent an assassin to my office to kill me. It was late in the evening. Everyone else had left. I was sitting at my desk, reviewing some documents for my next case for the next day when my assassin entered my office. He wasted no time. You have ignored all our warnings. He addressed me full of anger. I'm here to kill you. And he pointed his gun toward me. Fear froze me to my chair. He was strong, he had a gun, and he was huge, over six feet tall. My hands shook, fight or flight. I couldn't fight, I wanted to run. But at barely under five feet tall, I was not a match for the monster. I swallowed a scream. My blood rushed into my head. Terror banged against my chest as a courtroom gavel. My chin trembled and my mind raced as my assassin explained to me how he would carry out my execution. I could hear my heart and I started to pray. Nothing, no interrogations or arrest had rendered me so desperately and helpless. Warnings from family and friends rang in my ears. They foretold this would happen if I continued to disobey the dictator and his government. I felt alone with my assassin, and yet I was not alone. I sensed Christ's presence and his message in my spirit, shared the gospel. So I consider the man before me a human being in a desperate need
to find the truth and freedom. I met my assassin's eyes, and with a calm voice, I shared the gospel. His eyes soften, his shoulders relax. He placed the gun on the table. His brown eyes still remain locked on me, searching and attentive. I stare deeply into his eyes, so deeply as I share the gospel, I almost, I was almost able to see a change coming. And as God's word reached him, he accepted Christ right there in front of me. God saved both of us. My assassin left my law office as a brother in Christ and a free man indeed. And neither of our life would ever be the same again. But that didn't change the fact that the dictator wanted me dead. I continue my legal work only because I knew and I strongly believed that God had called me to the legal profession for that purpose. It was God's battle and I was his tool. I am not a hero. I have defended many heroes. I only acted in faith and with God's power I won. Surely, my courage and determination to fight for truth and freedom made the dictator and his government even more desperate and even more threatening towards me. I was put under strictest stricter surveillance, daily arrest, search, interrogated, by the securitat and beaten, held under house arrest. I should be dead, but God had other plans. And after years of daily interrogation, arrest, surveillance, even death threats, finally I was exiled as a political refugee to America. Shortly after that, the revolution erupted in Romania and dictator Ceausescu was captured. <coughs> and at Christmas Day, 1989, after a brief trial that lasted under an hour, Ceausescu was executed by a firing squad. The once all-powerful ruler of Romania, the one who declared himself a god, who built a huge palace for himself, the man who grew stronger by destroying others, the one who jailed and killed many Romanians, and especially Christians, was now defendless. Dictator Ceausescu died as a criminal. His fi famous final portrait of death was flashed around the world. No dictator can take our freedom from us forever. Freedom is a gift from God. No government can make a change strong enough to keep us from freedom. Our fate keeps us free. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. I am alive and Ceausescu is dead. Those of us who experience communist and dictatorship and love freedom will rather die on our feet than live without freedom. We must not allow this to happen in America. America has been the symbol of freedom. A free America is God, it's God's gift to mankind. This very free America protected my life as a dissident in communist Romania. I am a living proof of your strong beliefs and of your powerful acts in defense of freedom. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, President Ronald Reagan told us. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same. The American people indeed brought Christ and freedom to people all over the world, it's time for us 
to bring Christ and freedom back to America. On the day before he was assassinated, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave us this challenge. We have an opportunity to make America a better country. Freedom or progress, he said, comes through the tireless efforts of men willing to be co-workers with God. Surely, God has done his work through me to accomplish amazing things and to change America, to change Romania. Today, Romania is a flourishing democratic country that respects human and religious rights. We enjoy freedom today in America because others lay down their lives for our freedom. To live free, we must be ready to die for freedom. Freedom comes at a very high cost, but fighting for freedom has its rewards. Just ask a veteran. To me, leading my vicious communist interrogators or my assassin to freedom was worth the fight. Having my assassin written, written encounter as his chapter in my memoir, Saving My Assassin, has been an astonishing gift. Being here with all of you, encouraging, challenging, or sharing with you my victorious fight for freedom is my greatest honor. Freedom is more than living in a free country. Your soul must be free. You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You were set free. Do you believe it? Because there is no freedom without God, not even in America. God set me free and work remarkable things to change a country, Romania. God wants to do the same things here to change us and to change America through each one of us. Never, 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 never forget that you pledged and you are a warrior a fighter, America's sword and shield, a guardian of freedom, a winner committed to excellence, a champion of freedom, a leader. You pledge to defend America with your life. Your courage strengthens others to win their freedom. Your sacrifice keeps America great. Freedom is worth fighting for. We have a God-given right to live our lives free from oppression. Be strong and courageous. Lead gracefully. Live life to the fullest. Make every challenge in life your greatest opportunity. <coughs> Honor the lives of all soldiers, many who gave it all for our freedom. Value the memories of all those courageous civilians who died taking a stand for freedom so we could exercise our freedom. See the possibility of freedom even when others consider it impossible or unreachable. Act in freedom daily, no matter how hard that might be. You are the solution you are looking for. Do not let fear kill freedom. Brave people are free people. This is how leaders live. This is how leaders lead. We are here to keep the flame of freedom burning brightly no matter the cost, Americans have always paid the price. President John F. Kennedy told us, and one path we shall never choose, he reminded us, is the path of surrender or submission. Be strong and courageous. Dream big. Attempt great things. Ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, 
humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve amazing deeds. Freedom is precious. Thank you. Um, yes, yes, I do. And if you read, the, if you read the, my book, you'll be amazed what uh, God did. Every single life is important, and every single person that we encounter in our lives are there for a, a great purpose. And the purpose is, uh, especially for us, that we found the truth and freedom to guide them to truth and freedom. And he, now he is a fighter for truth and freedom. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, Will O'Connor from the University of Denver. Um, given essentially the very high information control in the Warsaw Pact countries, I'm curious as to how you developed your perceptions of America, how information about America was relayed to you, both through propaganda channels and through more dissident um, Ex, maybe ex-Soviet uh, channels. Mm -hmm. um, we were not allowed to, uh, to read or to learn English. In fact, that's the reason why when I came, I didn't know one word in English. We were not allowed to have any publications, but the presence of uh, the American uh, government in, in Romania was absolutely amazing. I still have relationship with the people that work in Romania, and they uh, knew to speak Romanian language. So we didn't have to learn English, so they were able to learn. Um, I have to say it, and I hope it's part of uh, the response too, uh, but I want to tell you that every morning I had to take my, my kids uh, to school. Um, I walk them to school, and I walk in front of the American Embassy. And um, I remember they walking um, in front of the embassy. Uh, first of all, it was an unwritten rules. That's the way communist works to scare people and everything. Unwritten rules that you cannot walk on the streets uh, of the, uh, Rome uh, the American embassy because you give them kind of favor or something. So you have to walk on the other side. So um, as a lawyer, I said, I, I don't see any law, so I'm going to walk there. <laughs> so uh, I, I walk, I always did that. So, but I have to tell you two things. One is the, I was watching, it was a huge American flag. I don't know uh, what's your uh, attitude towards the um, American flag, but walking by the American embassy and seeing that huge flag, to me and to many, many people, under the Berlin, uh, under the wall, a uh, communist wall, it was an amazing symbol that somewhere outside, people are fighting for us. People are trying really hard to, to protect us or even to bring something to us, like Bibles or other things. And it was absolutely amazing. Even now, wherever I go, after 30 years in America, I cannot stop and cry when I see an American flag. You brought freedom 
and Christianity to people all over the world. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You are the hope of the world. That's, I will say we are, because I am an American citizen. But an other, <laughs> but an other, another story that I want to tell you really short is this, that in my wildest dream, I never thought about this. Walking by the American embassy, I always admire the Marine in front of the American <laughs> embassy and everything, and all the uniforms. and. I never imagined that one day I'm going to have a member of our family, a Marine, <laughs> my son-in-law. So God is faithful and he's, he's uh, bringing amazing things in your life if you let him do it. I hope I answered your, your question. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I'm a C4C. I'm Ed uh, from Guest 134. What made you, uh, what made like, you different from others? Like, why didn't others made the same stance um, I believe uh, it was, uh, first of all, if you read my book, you, you will understand that I didn't have anything that worked for me starting with the, the, the minute that I was born. So please, if you think that everything works against you, take my example and, and be happy that you can achieve amazing things if you don't look at the negatives in your life. Because negatives in your life will work in, in, in a wonderful way. That's the way God works. I'm a believer and I believe that. Um, God put on my heart as I explain in all the whisper on all the double life that my parents and relatives, God put on my life to find the truth. I want you, when you go home or you go in your room, I want you to think about what God, what, what is one thing in your heart that you say is not right, it needs to be changed, uh, I'm going to do this. That's the purpose in your life. That's, I, I look forward to go into law school and I thought that I'm going to find the truth in law books, you know, and I thought that I'm going to speak up for the truth and look what, what God had in, in mind. But whatever is that you are so determined, you are no, not happy with what's going around and it's like a fire in you, that's your mission. That, and that's unique. And please don't understand, don't think that you have to have everything prepared, everything lined up. No, I don't have time to explain it to you, but when I was, I will say a few things. I'm a lawyer and I can prove it to you moment by, by moment that I was only a tool in God's hands and God did everything. And I will try really, really fast to, to say a few things. For example, when uh, um, Christians or, human, or people that spoke up against the government um, came to me as a lawyer. What do you do? You go and search the the law, and I found those law. I made copies, and the, I went to to court, and I gave the copies to um, to the judge and the prosecutor. I had no idea why, but I felt that that was that I was supposed to do. Late on, later on in that day, I listened to Voice of America. There was another unwritten rule, we, we you communists, uh, you cannot uh, listen to our enemies, Americans. But there was no law, so I said, show me the law, and if you don't, I'll listen. So I did, I, uh, I listened to Voice of America. So here I am, listening to Voice of America, and all of a sudden, they talk about me, the arguments, how I was dressed, how I was, uh, uh, what I said and so forth. And all of a sudden I'm saying, how is that possible? And the only reason is, is because I found out later on that a representative from several other countries, including America, were behind, the, behind me taking notes and because everybody was astonished. Is this possible? An 82 girl uh, under 30 years old, you know, will take the government to court. So God prepare every single step. All you have to do is to be available to him. Don't think that you have to have everything ready. 
Think about the fire that is in you. Go and change America. And when America is changed, go and let America be free, the free that we know. You receive freedom. It's your time to give it back to others. And when America is free, the whole world is better. God bless you and remember when it's hard, remember that you are created for a very special purpose. Don't compare yourself. Don't do absolutely anything. You are here unique for a great purpose. You will enrich my life and you will enrich the life of many people. Go and do it. Yeah.